All right, thank you for joining me for a 60 minute floor-based yin yoga class. My name is Holly, my pronouns are she, her. Uh, for this class, you will want a carpeted area or a yoga mat if you have one. And you might also want a pillow or a blanket or both from around your home. You don't need any fancy yoga props, but pillow and or blanket. And then somewhere that's slightly padded that you can lie down on for this class. So we're going to start in a comfortable seated position. You can sit on your butt with your feet in front of you, with your knees bent, crisscross applesauce, or in Sukhasana easy pose with one foot in front of the other. You can roll your shoulders forward a few times, and backward a few times. Relax your shoulders, sit up nice and tall, take an inhale. Anything you want to let go of, exhale. So at the beginning of class, we'll just come into our breath. We'll start with a few rounds of four, seven, eight breathing. It's a soothing breathing technique. You'll inhale through your nose for a count of four, hold the oxygen in for a count of seven, and then slowly exhale through your mouth for a count of eight. So the idea is you inhale fairly fast through the nose, hold all that oxygen in your body, and then slowly exhale through your mouth uh, twice as long as you inhale. It might take you a few rounds to figure out how fast to inhale versus exhale. If after a few rounds you're still having trouble with the breath, you can keep the ratio, but instead make it like inhale for two, hold for three and a half seconds, and then exhale through your mouth for four. You can sit up nice and tall, drop your shoulders, relax your jaw, you are welcome to close your eyes You can also do a soft fuzzy gaze beyond the tip of your nose or focus on a spot in front of you in your room that helps you feel anchored in your body and your breath. Begin, seal your lips, inhale to your nose for one, two, three, four. Hold the inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale to your mouth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale through your nose, four, three, two, one. Hold the breath in, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Slowly exhale through your mouth, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale through the nose for four, three, two, one, pause, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale through puckered lips, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale for four, hold for seven, exhale for eight. We'll do two more minutes of four, seven, eight breathing. If your mind is wandering, just returning to the four, seven, eight breath, inhale for four, pause for seven, and slowly exhale for eight.
Let's do one more full round of four, seven, eight breathing. Whenever you're ready, just return your breath to normal in and out through your nose. My air conditioning is on right now and I suspect it's making a lot of noise on this recording. So I'm going to get up and turn it off. I will be right back. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so that was our breathing exercise. We'll now hop into yin yoga. This is a floor-based class where we will hold postures for three to five minutes. Our first um, stretch is an upright side stretch. You're gonna start uh, by bringing your feet out in front of you and then separating your feet as much as you'd like so you can have um, the feet relatively close together or a little bit further apart. You might rock back and forth or even pull your butt out from behind you if it helps you to sit forward of your sit bones. This is what's called dragonfly pose. And we're gonna take this into a side body stretch and I'll give lots of options with every posture we do. So the first option is to simply place your hand outside of your right thigh and tilt a little to the right so that you start to wake up the left side body. You can also bend your right elbow, placing your forearm on your right thigh. You can bend your right elbow more and place your hand in your head. And depending on your mobility, you can even place your elbow on the floor in front of you. Option to keep your left hand on your left thigh or on the floor, or if you'd like a shoulder stretch, can also bring your left arm overhead, making the arm long. You can bend your elbow and pat yourself on the back, or you can even rest um, both uh, hands on your ears to kind of reduce the noise in the room. So it's a side body stretch. You might play around with how wide apart you want your legs. The further open the legs are, the more intense the um, inner thigh stretch will be. The closer the feet are together, the more of a hamstring stretch you'll get. And if you'd prefer your feet close together, right, this might be a better option so that you're not kind of like awkwardly twisting your spine. So there's lots of options here to get a side body stretch. And we're gonna hold for three minutes. We're already a minute in, a little bit goes a long way. In yin yoga, because we hold postures for long periods of time, you wanna do about 70% uh, of what you think you should be doing. And if you like me are kind of a go-getter, maybe do like 60% of what you think you should be doing. Uh, when in styles of yoga, where we hold asanas for like 30 seconds or a minute, you'll often hear cues to push to your deepest point in the posture because you're not holding it for very long. But in yin yoga, because we hold the posture for a while, we don't just stretch muscles, we work into connective tissue, into tendons, ligaments, and joints. And again, a little bit goes a long way. Partway through the posture, you might observe a little bit of discomfort in your body or maybe in your mind and spirit as we enter into a little bit of stillness. If what you're doing does not feel good to your body, you know that it's not serving you, you know you won't feel good tomorrow morning, switch up what you're doing. Maybe take a different variation with your arms or your legs. If you don't feel anything at all, you might try a slightly deeper version of the posture or, or hold just as you are. Yin yoga gives us an opportunity to observe what happens when we slow down. It gives us an opportunity to sort of confront our discomfort, both physical discomfort, but also maybe like mental, emotional, or spiritual discomfort through stillness. And it gives us an opportunity to do so compassionately. So we're not judging ourselves. We're just, um, just noticing what's happening. We have about a minute left in the posture. If you'd like to go a little bit deeper towards the end, right, you might try taking a little bit of a deeper variation if it feels good. Let's take three more slow breaths here. If 
If your top arm is lifted overhead in any way, you can slowly bring that left hand down. And then as you're ready, you're gonna slowly come up to seated. Roll your shoulders forward a few times and backward a few times. You can do any other motions with your neck, with your head that feel good to you. You might even rinse out your knees, kind of moving them right and left, just moving in any way that feels good to you. And then we're gonna do the other side of our dragonfly side body stretch. All right, so on this side again, you can open your arms and legs as much or as little as you'd like. You can start with your left hand outside of left thigh, tilting slightly to the left. So you're gently stretching the right side body and squeezing into the left side body. You can also bend your left elbow, bring your forearm to your thigh, or keep bending the elbow and rest your head in your hand. And again, you can keep your right arm down by your side. You can also reach it long overhead. You can bend your elbow, pat yourself on the back. You can even place your right hand on your right ear. And this side might feel different than the other side, right? You might know why that is, like an injury or an illness, um, or maybe it, like an incongruency. A lot of us, like one of our you know, legs is slightly longer than the other, and that can affect our postures. You might have also had no idea until just now that one side of your body is a little bit tighter than the other. Yoga, especially yin yoga, where we're holding postures for a long period of time, is a great opportunity Begin to observe your body, maybe to address anything that feels a little tight. Um, and also just to accept this, the fact that like one shoulder might always be tighter than the other shoulder. And so you need to make a different shape on this side and that's okay too. We'll hold here for two more minutes in our side body stretch. A minute left in the posture, you can stay just as you are, or you can maybe try taking a little bit of a deeper variation if it feels good to you. Let's do three more slow breaths here. We want to come out of these postures slowly with control. If your top arm is up in any way, you can slowly float that right arm down. And then at your own pace, come up into a seated position. There's no rush. Again, you can roll your shoulders forward and backward, doing any little counter stretches that feel good to you. And then we're gonna turn and make our way onto our backs for puddle pose. This is our kind of reset button in yin yoga. You can lie on your back with your arms and legs down by your side. Some styles of yoga call this savasana or corpse pose or dead body pose, which is you know, a little macabre. And so yin yoga calls it puddle pose, like a rain puddle. So you can open your arms and legs as much as you'd like. And close your eyes if that feels good or do a soft fuzzy gaze on the ceiling. If lying on your back with your legs straight does not feel good to your lower back, you're welcome to bend your knees so that your feet are on the floor about hip width distance, let your knees rest together. You can also place a small pillow or blanket under your lower back. 
under your knees, under your head or neck, anywhere that might need a little bit of support. Again, for this yin yoga class, you don't need any um, fancy yoga props, but a pillow and or a blanket um, from around your home can be wonders to kind of help you get a little bit more relaxed and comfortable in the postures. Bend your knees if they're not already. At your own pace, you're gonna roll off to one side and then keep rolling onto your abdomen for our Sphinx pose. I will show you from the side and the front. So lying on your abdomen with your feet about hip width distance, they're not super far apart, but they don't need to be perfectly together. You're going to bend your elbows so that you do a little back bend. You want your hands and elbows about shoulder width distance option to have your elbows directly underneath your shoulders for a deep back bend or walk your hands forward a bit so your elbows are in front of your elbows um, and that lessens the back bend uh, but you still get the benefits of the posture so from the front it looks like this especially in a world where we tend to hunch forward back bends like this are so good um, for healing the spine through compression we're also stretching the fascia on the chest. In general, in yin yoga, you want to relax into the posture rather than push yourself into it. But there's um, occasionally some exceptions. And in this posture, you do want to press your elbows, forearms into the floor so that your shoulders stay out of your ears. So I know for me, it's a challenge. My shoulders often want to sink up. Keep your chest proud and your neck long. We're going to hold here for three minutes, and we're already a minute in. Keep your shoulders out of your ears. Notice where you might be holding on to unnecessary tension in the body. Think about relaxing through your feet, hamstrings, calves, and glutes. Soften through your chest, abdomen, and jaw. Continue to press your elbows into the floor. about 30 seconds left in the posture. You can stay here. You can also take this into a deeper back bend called seal pose. For seal pose, you're gonna spread your fingers wide, press your knuckles down, and then straighten your arms. Keep the shoulders out of the ears. Hold wherever you are for three slow breaths. As you're ready, slowly lower down. You can take your elbows out and your hands in. Option to bring your forehead down to the floor. Or if you'd like, look to one side. So I'm going to look to my left with the right ear on the mat. A few slow breaths here. After that back bend and heart opener, lying on the abdomen allows the spine to realign. It's still a nice massage for the abdominal wall. If you're looking to one side, gently lift your head, look to the other side, other ear on your mat. Breathe.
As you're ready, lift your chin, look forward, place your hands on the floor underneath your shoulders and roll yourself up to a seated position. We're gonna take a child's pose. So coming back onto your heels, if you have tight toes, ankles, or knees, you can roll up your yoga mat if you have one. So there's extra padding under any delicate joints. You can also place a thin blanket or pillow under any of those joints. If you have trouble sitting back on your heels, that's really normal. You can place as many pillows or blankets as you'd like in between your calves and thighs. You can um, keep your knees and feet together for this child's pose, or you can take a wide-legged child's pose, opening your knees. I will tell you, we're gonna do more hip openers um, in a little bit. So if you wanna keep your knees a little bit closer together so it's not as much of an inner thigh stretch, just know that we will get that in a little bit. From here, you're gonna walk your arms forward, bringing your forehead to the floor. Having your arms overhead does not feel good to your shoulders. You can have one or both arms down, palms facing up in what's called fetal pose. You're also welcome to place a pillow or blanket under your head or under your chest if that gives you some support. And we're gonna hold here for five minutes or already a minute into the posture. In our child's pose, we're stretching out the toes, the ankles, the knees. We're working through the lower back, middle back, upper back, all the way through the neck spine. And again, you wanna do about 70% of what you think you should be doing. Rather than forcing or fighting the posture, think about melting into the posture, soften into your breath. Relax into the floor. You might scan your body. And notice if there's an area where you're holding on to tension. Just gently start to relax a little bit deeper. And sometimes if, you know, for example, I have a knot in my shoulder and it's not going away. I'll just imagine what it might feel like or what it will feel like when that, that tight area releases. So even if the body can't totally relax, you can still picture that for yourself and envision what that will feel like one day. Hold here for two and a half more minutes. So we're halfway through the posture. This is often when we can get a little bit uncomfortable a great opportunity to safely confront your discomfort, both in stillness and body, mind, and spirit. Again, notice the difference between discomfort versus pain. If you're doing something that does not feel good to your body, remember that you can take a break. You can take a different shape of your body and grab um, a pillow or blanket if that will help you, and then just settle back into your stillness and breathe.
have about 30 seconds left in the posture. You can stay just as you are, or maybe inch your fingertips forward and sink your hips back, stretching the spine out just a little bit deeper in these final three breaths. We're going to slowly come out of the posture. There's no rush. At your own pace, lift your head. Start to walk your hands in under your shoulders and press yourself up into a seated position. If you'd like to take a counter stretch, you can put your hands on your back and do a little back bend if that feels good. Maybe a little twist. You can come onto all fours and maybe stretch out one leg and then the other. Ooh, if you rolled up your yoga mat in any way, you can flatten out your mat again and then turn, lie on your back, back into our puddle pose. Again, for puddle pose, you can have your knees bent with your feet on the floor, knees resting side by side, or you can straighten your legs and have your legs long on the floor. In that posture, we stretched out the body. Um, we also put some pressure on the feet, right? So. There wasn't like a ton of blood flow in the feet. You probably would not want to do that posture for like an hour at a time, right? But it's okay for five minutes. When we release out of that posture, we get a nice rush of blood all the way down into the feet. Good for circulation. So when we hold these postures for long period of, periods of time, right? We're working in the muscles, joints, tendons, ligaments, fascia. Um, we're also playing around with blood flow and encouraging good circulation throughout the body. And sometimes we don't get those benefits until we come out of a posture. So the release from the asana, what we're doing here can be as therapeutic to the body as the posture itself. It can also be therapeutic, you know, in, again, into like the heart or the mind or the spirit. Sometimes there's an emotional re release that comes with getting out of the posture. This might be an interesting thing to explore as well. Okay. At your own pace, you're gonna bend your knees if they're not already. Roll off to one side, maybe the side you haven't rolled off to yet. And then slowly press yourself up. Come into a seated position, sitting on your butt with your feet in front of you. The next posture we're going to do is called fire log pose or square pose. And I'm gonna give a lot of options, including options that um, have that use pillows and blankets. So I'll give lots of options here. Um, you're gonna start with your legs in front of you. Lift your right, bend your right knee so that your right foot is on the floor. Settle your sit bones into the floor. And then you're going to lift your right foot and place your um, right ankle on top of your left thigh. From here, you're going to walk your hands behind you. I'm gonna show you from the side. And bend your left knee so that your left foot is on the floor. And already you might be feeling a stretch in your outer right thigh. From here, you're going to take your left knee out to the left, left foot to the right, and sit up. And so this is what's called fire log pose, where eventually the shins are parallel to one another, ankle on top of the knee, knee on top of the ankle. This is not accessible to a lot of people. If this is accessible to you, wonderful. But if not, I'm going to give you lots of options and variations. So option one is to place pillows or blankets in between your knees, in between your ankles, under your knees, under your ankles, right? So there's lots of ways that you can play around with pillows and blankets. It might also feel good to have a pillow or blanket underneath your butt. 
so that you're sitting up a little bit more and the hips are a little higher and then the knees and hips might relax. You also have an option to do one leg at a time. Or you can sit in a little bit of a looser square so that your ankles are crossed rather than ankles and knees stacking. So lots of options here. If you're sitting with ankles crossed, it might also feel good to have pillows or blankets under the knees. Once you've found your version of fire log pose, you can decide what to do with your upright body. You can just sit up nice and tall. Or if you'd like more of a side seat stretch, you can start to fold forward. Lots of options for folding forward. You can have your hands on the floor in front of you. For my uh, mobile folks, you can even bend your elbows and have elbows on the floor. You can also have elbows on ankles or knees or thighs. For your spine, you can fold forward with a flat back. Or if it feels good, you can let your head drop bringing your forehead down towards the floor. This might be a little bit too much pressure on the lower back, especially if you have um, a history of slip discs or um, any lower lumbar pain today. So again, if folding forward, um, if you wanna try folding forward, but you have some lower back pain, you might fold forward with a flat back straight spine, keeping the shoulders out of the ears rather than letting your head drop. We're gonna hold here for a total of five minutes. We're already a minute and a half in. Once you've found the shape for your body, you're just going to hold and breathe. Take a shape, hold a shape, breathe. Sounds simple, but sometimes again, through this stillness, we start to confront maybe our own discomfort again, not just in the body, like my right side seat right now is like, ooh, I can feel the stretch, right? Through our stillness, we might also we might also experience some discomfort with the spirit or the heart or the mind. We might also discover boredom, deep relaxation, release. We might have an urge to laugh or to cry. And the idea here is you're just giving yourself the opportunity to feel whatever it is you're feeling without judgment or expectation or the need to explain it. So this is just a space for you to be still and breathe. Holding here for two more minutes.
with about 30 seconds left, you can stay just as you are, knowing that we're almost to the end. Or if you'd like, you can fold forward a little bit more, deepening the stretch to the side seat and hip. We'll take three more slow breaths here. If you're folded forward with a rounding spine, gently lift your chin and chest so that your back flattens. And slowly whoo, walk your hands in towards your body until you're in an upright position. Oh my goodness, I feel that. <laughs> you can roll your shoulders forward and backward. You can place your um, hands behind you. And there's a couple different ways to come out of this. You could simply straighten your bottom leg, right? You can also lean back onto your hands bringing the left foot to the floor. Now straighten the bottom leg and then whew, at your own pace, uncross that top leg. Any counter stretches you wanna make here, little windshield wiper action. Maybe you, you could do a flash dance where you lift your hips and do a back bend. Good. And then you're gonna make your way into your pedal pose, lying on your back. Again, you can have a pillow or blanket under your knees, under your lower back, under your head. Make this your own time. We often store some tension in our hips. Sometimes the release from the hip openers can be as intense as the posture itself. Again, it might be a physical release, like you feel a shift in where your blood is flowing or a change in temperature. It might be an emotional release or even like a thought or an aha moment or a memory pops up. We'll just take a few breaths here just to observe whatever is coming up and without judgment or expectation or the need to explain, just observing. Bend your knees and roll off to one side. Maybe even give yourself a hug. And then slowly press yourself up. No rush. We'll do the other side of our higher log pose or square pose. So again, sitting on your butt with your feet in front of you, keeping in mind that you're not symmetrical. So, you know, ideally you'll do the same version on this side as the other side, but it might look and feel different. That's okay. You're going to start by bending your left knee this time. So your foot is on the floor you Can kind of rock out your hips here. From here, you're going to cross your left ankle over right thigh. Place your hands behind you, lean back into your arms and then bend your right knee so that your right foot is on the floor. Start to turn your right knee out to the right so that Maybe the shins are parallel with the ankle on top of the knee and the knee on top of the ankle. Again, you might experiment with placing pillows in between the ankles and knees, in between the knee and the floor, maybe a pillow or blanket underneath your butt if that helps you sit up a little bit more. You can also have the bottom leg straight and you can also sit in a more loose square with your ankles crossed and your heels don't need to be super close to your groin, right? It can be a little bit further away. So lots of options. Once you've found a shape that feels good and sustainable for five minutes, um, you can continue to sit up nice and tall. 
can also play around with leaning forward a little bit. Again, this side might feel different, right? The hip might be tighter. So maybe on the other side, you went all the way down and on this one, you barely lean forward. That's a great place to be. You can keep your back flat. You can also let your spine round and your head fall. Lots of options. And then we'll just be still and breathe. About halfway through the posture, you need to take a different shape, take a break, add or remove a prop, you're welcome to do so. And just settle back into your stillness, back into your breath. Start to melt a little bit more into the posture, sink into your breath. Notice where you might be forcing or fighting and instead relax a little deeper. With about 30 seconds left in the posture, you can stay just as you are, or if it feels good to come down a little deeper at the end, now's your time taking three slow breaths here. your spine is rounded, you can lift your chin and chest so that your neck lengthens. Slowly walk your hands in. Whew, there's no rush. Sit up nice and tall. You can do any counter stretches that feel good. 
And again, you can simply straighten your bottom leg or lean back into your arms, bend the bottom leg, right foot to floor, straighten the bottom leg, uncross top leg, make any other motions of your body that feels good. Ooh, I've got a little knot in my hip, that was intense. And then as you're ready, you're gonna turn and lie on your back into your puddle pose. When we hold postures for that long, our body does sort of mold into that shape. So it is not uncommon to feel stiff when you come out of the posture. That does not mean that you've done it wrong if you feel some discomfort when you come out of it. That is intentionally why we lie in a neutral position afterwards um, so that the body can reset and realign. One of the theories behind yin yoga um, is that putting like weight on a joint when you're moving this slow or being still is okay. So a lot of times when we think about like hyperextension to a joint and how dangerous that can be, like what comes to my mind as a, a fan of sports is like watching, you know, a football player or basketball player running full speed and then, you know, tripping or falling or getting run into by someone else and like a joint hyperextends, but that's at like running full speed, right? Versus in yin yoga, there's this idea that actually some um, extension to the joints for long periods of time when you're still and when you're breathing can actually really help to loosen up everything that surrounds those joints which is also why sometimes it can, we can feel a little bit stiff when we come out of the posture, but maybe we actually feel a little bit um, more at ease the next day. That's often how I measure if um, I push myself too hard in a posture or not, is like the next day, do I feel good? Because sometimes in the moment it's hard to tell, right? Like maybe stretching really deep feels good or maybe you're like, I can't tell if anything's going on and the next day, right? You really feel it um, in a pleasant way or in a like, you know, or not pleasant way. So, of course, we're listening to what our body's telling us in the moment, but I think there's also something to be said for how do you feel after class? Not just your body, but like, how does your spirit feel? How does your heart feel? Our fire log pose was an external hip rotation. So our hips rotated out. Next, we're gonna do a spine twist with an optional internal hip rotation for anyone who would like to move the hip and pelvis in the other direction. So you're gonna bend your knees if they're not already with feet on the floor. You can take your arms out to the side perpendicular to your body in a big expansive gesture. You can also bend your elbows, cactusing them like goalposts. Oops, I knocked over my clock. From here, um, you can keep your knees and feet together side by side. You can also lift your right foot off the floor and cross your right thigh over your left thigh. So right hamstring over left quadricep muscle and that'll start to internally rotate the hip. Um, and if you'd like, you can even try crossing your right ankle under your left ankle. And this is like eagle legs. If you do 26 into yoga with me, we do a standing version of this. From here, you're going to start to roll to the left so that your right hip stacks on top of left hip. Um, and again, for the lower body, you can simply have right knee stacked on top of the left knee. You can have your legs crossed with um, right knee under left knee, or you can even cross your right ankle under your left calf. So lots of options. You don't need the internal rotation to the hip, but it's there for you if you'd like it. Draw your right shoulder down to the floor. If your shoulder isn't touching the floor, it might feel good to have a little pillow or blanket underneath that shoulder for support or under any other part of your body that could use support, maybe under um, your knees or between your ankles. You can keep the back of your head on the floor or if it feels good, you can look over your right shoulder to get a little bit of a neck twist as well. And we're gonna hold here for a total of five minutes, already a minute and a half in.
is a nice spine twist. It's also good for digestion. A little bit goes a long way. Notice where you're holding tension. Relax. And also remember that there's there should be no judgment for like observing tension in your body. Like I just noticed I was really like holding in my stomach and then I relaxed my stomach. Um, there's no judgment if you notice like, oh, I'm gritting my teeth and clenching every muscle in my body. If you notice that, good for you for noticing it. And then you can maybe relax a little bit more if it feels good, right? But the idea that, I don't know, to be a good yogi, you must somehow be relaxed all the time um, is a little absurd to me, right? We come to yoga, or at least I come to yoga because I am not naturally a very relaxed person. And through, through a yoga class, I'll observe maybe where I'm still holding tight. And then maybe through yoga, we're invited to relax and let go and release a little bit more. But that's... Um, a process and it's not really like a destination. Like I don't think we'll ever get to a place where like, okay, now I am finally relaxed, right? Like for the rest of my life, uh, that would maybe be cool, but maybe it's just a place we go, like just for a few breaths, I give myself permission to relax just for now. Holding here for one more minute. Take three more slow breaths here. If you're looking over your right shoulder, slowly roll the back of your head to the floor. If your um, ankle is crossed, you might uncross the ankle and then pressing your feet into the floor, pull your right hip back down. If your top leg is crossed over your bottom leg, uncross the right leg. And we're gonna go to the other side and take a moment to stretch up and down in any way that feels good to you. And then cross your well, first of all, you can keep your knees and feet together, or you can cross your left hamstring over right quadricep, left leg over right leg. You can also try wrapping your left ankle behind your um, right calf. And then you can roll to the right so that your left hip stacks on top of right hip, bringing the left shoulder down towards the floor. Option to have the back of your head on the floor, or you can look over your left shoulder, bringing your left ear down towards the floor. And again, this side might feel different from the other side. It does for me. I'm a gentle twist here, not a point of pain, holding for five minutes, already a minute in.
Give yourself space to observe, to relax, to be still and breathe. About one minute left on the posture. Letting go of any lingering tension in the body. Take three slow breaths here. You're looking over your left shoulder and slowly roll the back of your head towards the floor. If your ankles are crossed, you might uncross the ankles, then ooh, pressing your feet into the floor, roll your left hip down. If your legs are crossed, uncross top leg. For final savasana, you're welcome to grab a blanket to place over your body, pillow to place under any part of you or on top of you, it might feel good. You can keep your knees bent with your feet together or lower your arms and legs down. And close your eyes, open your arms and legs as much or as little as you'd like. Take a nice breath in. An easy breath out. With every exhale, let your body get a little heavier. With every inhale, spirit a little lighter. Stay in your final savasana or puddle pose as long as you'd like. When you do get up, I encourage you to get up slowly. Sit up for a while before you stand up, especially if you have low blood pressure, you've been on the floor for a while, sit up for a while first. If you've ever had the privilege of having a professional massage, you know that afterwards they always give you water um, because when you like flush out your um, muscles that much, right? Some stuff can get released and you wanna like cleanse it out of your body. Same thing with yin yoga. When we hold postures for this long, some stuff can release from the body, some lactic acid, some uric acid in the joints. And so please make sure that you are drinking a lot of water for the rest of your evening um, to flush out anything that might have uh, been released in, in your body or like in your spirit as well. <laughs> um, have a wonderful rest of your evening, and I hope to practice with you soon. Bye, friends.